Now to discuss again almost the same topic about this, about um, the circuits. Um, now, these are the bulbs. Any bulbs, parking, reverse lamps. I wanted to illustrate a point about this, even though we went over it. This one over here, it actually is a meter, but I put a, a wire over here. 12 volts over here, and after the fuse, we always get 12 volts, and after the switch, we always get 12 volts. Up to this point, this point, this point, all these are 12 volts. From here to here to here, 12 volts. All your bulbs are out. You come in the morning and all your bulbs are out. What could be the common cause? If you're going to say the fuse, of course. If you're going to say the switch, of course. It's in the path of it. But if these are all the same ground, if these all come to the same ground that comes back to this, all these will be out. They could be knocked out. Not just a fuse or a switch. Keep in mind, a ground. Why? Because the current that leaves the battery has to come back to the battery. It has to come back. When you leave for work in the morning, you have to come back home from work to your house. Same thing, right? A U-turn. So here, 12 volts, here, 12 volts, here, 12 volts. We know that this could be knocked out. Let's go to a similar and a little more complex circuit that I wanted to show you. Okay. We replace the grounds with a, ve a, ve a vehicle frame, ground symbol. That's what the textbook tells us. So for our, for our purposes, the vehicle frame is the ground, not the battery terminal itself. But the va the the frame, the metal can be can be used as a conductor for ground. Let's look at these examples over here. Putting the multimeters over here. Let's say these are bulbs, whatever these are, right? Resistors. If you go from here to here with the meter, you're going to measure two volts. If you go from uh, uh, from B to C, you're going to measure 2 volts. If you go from C to D, you're going to measure how much? 4 volts. If you go from D to E, you're going to measure 6 volts. That's good and dandy, but you know what you're doing? You're constantly moving both probes of the meter back and forth. Do you see that? I'm taking the, the red one, the black one. Putting it, the red one, the black one, the red, the black one. Constantly, constantly doing that. The other method is we always leave the negative at ground as, as, as the permanent one, and we move around the positive. In that scenario that we do that, and that's how we always measure things with respect to ground. Over here, ground is the, is the vehicle frame. Doesn't matter. Ground is the reference point. This is a ground potential. So what do we do? We're leaving the black one, but we're moving this one, the positive one. This is the positive of the meter. This is the negative. This is the positive. This is the negative. This is the positive. Red is positive. Obviously, black is negative. Positive, positive. Our voltages will change that we measure. We're not going across the resistor anymore. We're going at the points with respect to ground from one side of the resistor or the bulb to the other side. Watch the voltage change. We had two volts across B and C. Now, how much do we get? 12 volts here, 12 volts here, with respect to ground, with respect to this point. Now, we're going to take our meter, the plus. We're going to leave everything at, at vehicle ground. Guess how much we measure now? If we lost two volts across here and we had 12 volts, this will show us how much? 10 volts. We lost two volts. Isn't this the same as measuring two volts across here with both me, uh, uh, probes? It sure is. This is very confusing to people. And that's why I have to stress the point constantly, constantly to people and to, uh, uh, and to students, to technicians, the difference of how you're measuring things. You me true, you're measuring across something, it's easy. You see two volts across it, fine. I know this bulb has two volts. Here, you're going from this point to this point. You're going across it, but with re reference to this. So we lost 12 volts to 10 volts is two volts. Same as going across it. What about this volt? We said we lost four volts across this one. Let's prove it. 10 volts was here. How much should D be? Four volts less because we just lost 4 volts. So that means it should be 10 volts to 6 volts. This is 
This point is 4 volts less than this one. Let's go from here to here. We said how much we lost? 6 volts. So if this is 6 volts, and we lose 6 volts across here, how much do we have here? 0 volts. Whatever the loss is over here, when we put the meter across that point, that's how much we should measure before this component. After you, you measure the component, that's when you'll measure the loss of that bulb. Again, 6 volts here. The bulb gave me a loss of 6 volts. That means after the bulb, I'm at 0 volts with respect to ground. This is one of the most, this is one of the most very confusing thing. Uh, um, many, many people get confused. Like I, like, like I said, don't want to repeat the point constantly, constantly. But you have to understand this. If you do not understand this point, what you're measuring over here, you cannot be successful in automotive, in, in any type of technician work that relates to electronics. Now, a side point to be made about the meters. The meters have to have a very high input impedance. When you put this across to measure the voltage, that's why I brought this up, this is 10 mega ohm input impedance. That means it does not low down the, the component that you're measuring. There are some meters out there which are very cheap meters, but they will give you inaccurate readings because the, the resistance is very low. They call it input impedance. Be careful of the correct meter that you buy. The one that I always showed you, the fluke meter that I always showed you, uh, this is the 80, 80, uh, even 86 type, I think it is, or 88, probably 86, I think. And this one over here has something called RPM. It actually me measures RPM, believe it or not, for automotive. I do not see too many of these meters around. However, if you want to put RPM, you want to measure RPM, this is the, the, the way you, can, you measure from this socket over here, this one over here, this port. So be careful what you buy. Like I said, <clears throat> make sure <clears throat> the meter you buy is high input impedance. 10 mega ohm for digital meter is the standard. Then you will measure correctly on this circuit. With this circuit, you'll measure 12 volts, it's 12 volts. If you have a cheap meter, you'll measure 10 volts. 9 volts, then you'll say, oh, so something is wrong with this. No, it's not wrong with the circuit. That meter has to be a high input impedance. Thanks for watching. Go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Um, please leave a comment if you don't understand this because this is very confusing. I understand. I'll address the issues when I get a chance. Thanks.